Here in the kitchen, we're surrounded by lots of different things that come from planet Earth, that come from the natural world. And we can divide those things into inorganic things like rocks and minerals or organic things like fruit and vegetables. Today we're going to talk about what is a mineral, the most basic unit of geology, and how do we identify these things? The first criteria that a substance has to have in order to be a mineral is it has to be a solid. So for example, water, well water doesn't qualify too liquidy and so does the gas around my head, it has to be a solid. The second, it has to occur in nature. So if I can't find it here in Earth somewhere, it doesn't qualify as a mineral. Even if I go into my mad scientist lab and I make some strange concoction, it's not a mineral. The third thing is it has to have a specifically definable chemical composition, and that is what elements go into the molecular structure of the mineral that make it what it is. It's like you or me. What makes us up defines who we are. Same thing with a mineral. In the case of in the kitchen, one commonly used table salt. We call that the mineral halite. Halite is made up of one sodium atom and one chlorine atom arranged in a nice order. Sodium and chlorine make up our chemical formula for salt, and it always is and always will be. The fourth component is that those chemicals then have to be arranged in a certain crystalline order. And salt is great because it breaks into little cubes. Well, why does it break into little cubes? Because its atomic structure arranges itself in little cubes. Here we've got a box made out of marshmallows and grapes. You can do this at home. But it is the structure of salt. It's the structure, structure of sodium chloride, which we call the mineral halite. You can see the large sodium um, atoms at the corners here, and the small grapes represent chlorine. So just many, one of many of over 2,000 minerals that we've identified across the Earth, and each one has its own fingerprint of chemical and crystalline structure. The last thing you have to be to be a mineral is you have to be inorganic. A lot of these things, like fruits and minerals, are common in that we have different species of fruits and vegetables, different species of minerals, but they are different because they have an organic source and not an inorganic source. So if you have all five of those things, you can call yourself a mineral and go on about your merry way, marry up with some other minerals and make some rocks maybe on down the line. There are many different types of minerals found all throughout the world. Some are very common, like for example quartz is a very common mineral. Calcite, which makes up limestone and other carbonate type rocks, those are very common. Things like gypsum, those are made up and they go into your wallboard in your home. So we use minerals all around us every day. Now some things though in nature you may not know that if they're a mineral or not. They kind of fall on that gray line. For example, Ice is one. So an ice cube, you have to think about whether or not it's a mineral or not, right? It's a solid. It does occur in nature. We have ice everywhere. We do have a definite chemical composition. It's made of H2O, the same as water. It's frozen water. What about a crystalline composition? Does ice have a crystalline composition? And the answer is yes. When water freezes, it takes on an organized crystalline composition and it's obviously inorganic. So I think we can define ice as being a mineral even though water in its liquid state is not. What about glass? Now glass is a solid. Glass does occur in nature. Glass is definitely got a chemical composition that can be defined. It's typically made out of silica, which is the same stuff that quartz is made out of. But what's different about glass is the crystalline composition. Now what you don't know, and kids, don't try this at home, what you don't know about glass is it does not have a crystalline order, which is one reason why when you break glass that it breaks into curved shapes. Those curved shapes are very random. 
There is no crystalline order to glass because it doesn't have a definable crystalline shape. So therefore, glass is not a mineral. There are many natural glasses that form in the world, so and they are inorganic, but unfortunately that last one's kind of a, a deal breaker for glass. So as you can see, there are many different types of solids that occur in nature, and not all of them necessarily are minerals. As long as you apply those five concepts, you too can figure out if it's a mineral or not. <laughs>